In the previous video, we looked at creating a single form based on a single table in the database, which was the members table. The usability of this form, while it looks good and is reasonably usable, is still a little bit farther away from what I'd be used to using in the datasheet view of the table if I was the database administrator. So for example, with the datasheet view, I can see a lot more data in one go, in that I can see lots of the different records altogether. If I want that type of experience for the end user, it might be a good idea to do something a little bit more sophisticated than just a single form like I see here. I'd like to do a form with the subform and base it on more than one table. I'll just close that form down and I'll go into the Create tab again and go to Form Wizard again. So this time, rather than focus just on one table, I'm going to focus on two tables and looking at this database that we're using here, I can see in the relationships in the background, I can see a cash squeeze table and a films table. I'd like to get this form to span across that relationship. So I'm going to find those tables. Uh, so up here in the table section, I've got cash squeeze. I can pick in some or all of these different fields. At the moment, I'll actually take them all in from the cash squeeze table. So I'll click on my double chevron there. And before I leave this screen, I'm also going to switch over to the films table as well. And again, remember that these are directly related with a one-to-many relationship. So here with the films table, I don't necessarily have to take in all of the different fields. And again, especially if I've got lots of different fields there, there's only so much I can fit in on one screen for the user. So I'm going to be selective. I'm just going to take them in one at a time. So I'll take the ID, film name, uh, the year released. The category, there's no need to take it because the category will actually be, be placed up on top. Uh, of that section, so I'm going to leave the category field. I'll add in the member field. Again, the int director, that looks like a foreign key, so there's no need to take that. It probably won't mean much to the end user anyway. So I'm going to take all of the other fields in and run time. So I'm going to click on next. And straight away, because I've taken records from more than one table, Access realizes that it's going to have to do something more than just a basic form. And what it suggests to me to do is to actually take a form with a subform in this type of layout that I see here in front of me. And that's generally the preferred option. So I'm going to click Next on that option. Data sheet view for the subform, that's usually the best option as well. It can just uh, push or collapse in the information into the smallest amount of space possible, I get more information rather than tabular, which adds in thicker margins. So I generally go for data sheet view, so that's fine. Click on next. And then it asks me what the different titles are that I want in my forms. For the moment, I'm just going to leave what uh, Access suggests to me there. I can always rename and relabel them later on. And lastly, it's just asked me whether I want to go straight to the actual view of the form or modify the form's design. Well, essentially, I'm going to modify the form's design anyway, so I may as well click on Modify Form's Design and Finish. And this is the form design. Again, we can see the different fields that we would have expected from before using the basic type of form and associated labels as well. And then here, I've got this white area in the middle, uh, which is title as the subform. And over at the side, you might uh, realize that I've actually created two separate forms here. And essentially what a form with a subform is, they all run when I actually click on the TBL categories form, but essentially it sticks in the subform into the middle of that form as well. And that's the scenario that's happening. So to look at this form so I can gauge what I need to do to tidy it up, I'm going to go to the view. And I can see here what's happening. I'll just maximize that to try and get enough space. And what I've got is I've got the categories up at the top, and then I've got all of the films associated with that category. Now, I've got a record selector at the bottom there, so I can start scrolling through all of those different categories, and I can see as I scroll through category, category by category, I can see all the different films associated with it. So in terms of this type of form versus the basic type of form that we saw in the previous video, this is much, much more powerful, and I'm getting a lot more data. Now the design obviously isn't perfect, so we need to tidy it up a little bit. Some things that I generally want to do, again I'm going to tidy up all of these labels, take out all of these prefixes that are on my field names, also any different underscores that I see. I'll left align this field to make it consistent, and I'll try and get rid of this label films, it's obvious that these are films anyway, and I'll resize this whole subform to make it bigger to try and see all of the different data at once. I'll get rid of this record selector, and then we'll see where we are then. So I'll go back to the actual design view. Let me just first of all tidy up the labels. And there are the labels tidied up. I'm then going to delete this field here 
and just move over the subform into this area. I'll widen out the subform, and in fact, I think I'll widen out the whole canvas here and widen out the subform as far as I can. I'll take this field here and I want it to left align it, so I'll bring up the property sheet for that and the format to the text align property, I'll set that to left. And now let's go back to the view of this form to see what else I can do. Uh, I said that I take out the record selector as well, I'll do that in a minute. Um, but generally it's uh, an improvement. Now, I'm still not seeing all of the different films that are part of this category drama. There's a lot of films in it, 18 I can see in the navigation bar down the bottom. Um, but again, to try and increase the amount of size that, uh, or the amount of data that I can see in one go, I'd really like to reorder these different fields up the top in the category section and maybe move them one beside each other to have a nice horizontal roll, rather than having this vertical area here of three fields, one underneath the other, and then wasting all of this screen real estate here. So I'm going to go back in, fix this record selector first of all, and then rearrange those fields. So. The record selector is in the form section, so I'll click on the form, go down here, record selector is set to yes, I need to flick that to no, so that's that done. And now, if I can get back into this detail section here, and start reordering these different uh, fields. Now what I might do is just put the STR category first, I'll resize this label, I'll move this over, and then Category ID, it will be obvious that this is the category ID beside it perhaps, so I might move that over to one side without the label. And then the description, again, it will be obvious that that's the description, so I may not need to actually put all of those labels in there if it's obvious what they are. So just remove that property sheet for one minute and just move those sections in beside each other. It's worth noting as well that I can use lots of different types of layout options. Uh, by clicking and dragging a multiple selection like I'm just after doing there. And I can go into the actual design Arrange ribbon here, or the Arrange tab, and uh, look at maybe the Align. So I can align those to the top, and it just evens them out without me having to eyeball every single one and try and mash them up. Now, back into my subform. I'll just retidy this, try and get it to align with the uh, left-hand side of that category label. And again, that should give me more space. So let's take a look at how my design is looking, back into the view. There is still more space here, left down in this area, down at the bottom and over the side, so again I can resize that. But again, even if I wanted to try and maximize the space after that, well there's certain ones of these different uh, text fields or fields in the subform, and the data doesn't take up the full amount of width that has been allotted to it. So for example, film ID here. For the moment, I'll only have two or three digits in that field, but I've got a very wide space there that that film ID field is taking up. Also here in the rating field, again, a very large space has been taken up, but really it's only four or five different characters that are ever printed in it. So each one of those different fields, I'd like to tidy them up. Also looking at the different field names, these have got lots of LNC naming prefixes, lots of underscores. Again, they're straight out of the field names in the database. So I'd like to uh, try and manage that a little bit better. And then lastly, down here, I've got a, I've got a navigation bar, especially for this subform. Now, it makes sense that I need the navigation bar for the upper or outer part for the different categories. But here, really, it's the data sheet view. And to see all the different records, I can just scroll up and down using my vertical scroll bar. So I can do away with this navigation bar just for the subform and will avoid confusion for the end user where they might be getting mixed up between what's the navigation bar for the subform and what's the navigation bar for the outer form. So I'll click back into design then and try and manage some of those different options. If in your design view you cannot actually see the design of the subform, it's just a ma simple matter of double clicking on it and it may open it by itself. Now, in different uh, contexts, it may actually show it straight away in the Act Subform section in the form design, but if not, just double click and we come into this area here. So again, I can tidy up the different labels, which I'm going to do, and try and make them as obvious as possible to what the actual user needs. So for example, int u released, I'll obviously get away for the prefix, get away uh, or remove the actual underscore, but also u released, it's a very big long name where I've got very short data inside that field. So possibly I could just truncate it just to the word year and that would suffice. 
So I've tidied up the, all those different labels. And then when it comes to the actual width of the different fields, I'll have to do it by memory. But it's important to realize when I'm actually reducing the width of the actual fields to show up in the data sheet view in the subform, I need to actually reduce the width of both the label and also the uh, the text box as well. So that's the ID field. You release needs a resize as well. Again, I'm going to get rid of just the released out of that label. And I'll just resize both the label and the field. Uh, actor is fine, rating is fine. Review and runtime are two, again, that don't have a huge amount of data in terms of the number of characters that are displayed across with it. So again, I just will resize both of those. And that looks good. So one last thing that I need to do before I leave this subform is just uh, turn off the record, sorry, the navigation buttons down the bottom. So I want to just come down here, navigation buttons, turn that to no. So I'll save that, close down that subform design, and then I should be ready just to see what it looks like in the overall view. And that's looking good. Again, I see all the different categories at the top, category information, but my inner subform is looking quite good as well. Nice tidy labels, nice meaningful actual labels on each of the different uh, columns. And also, I can see all of the different data that are required, and I can get more just by scrolling up and down. And that's how to do a form with a subform in Access. And again, if you found this useful, make sure that you like it and share it.